ports and sockets and sessions, oh my. When you first get into computer networking, you start hearing these terms, so what are they exactly? Simply put, ports and sockets and sessions are... Okay, so when you first get into computer networking, you hear terms like ports and sockets and sessions, and we're trying to figure out what are those. When you're first starting out, what exactly are we talking about when we say ports? or sessions. So to understand ports, sockets, and sessions, we need to get into TCP IP, or better known as Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol. And when you understand TCP IP and the protocols and applications within TCP IP, you begin to understand where the terms ports, sockets, and sessions come from. Now, if you haven't yet watched this video where I show you what protocols are in networking, make sure to check it out. Essentially, protocols are languages and systems that different applications use to understand each other across a network from one device to another. To keep ports, sockets, and sessions easy in this video, we're going to look at the application protocols used in TCP IP first. When we say application level protocols, these are applications that initiate some type of request, usually on a client computer, or answer a request, typically on a server. The biggest example used in most educational material for computer networking is the request for a web page across the internet. When you use an application like a browser, you typically type in a website address and the browser application sends out a request to a web server for a web page. This is done across TCP IP using an application level protocol known as HTTP or Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Keep that example in mind here as we get into what ports actually are. So when a client computer initiates a request to a server across a network, it uses specific values called port numbers to request a specific type of service. Servers will listen on ports that actually correspond to different services offered on that server. Going back to the previous example, a web browser sends a request to a web server using destination port 80. The web server is listening on port 80 for those specific requests from clients, so it knows when the client wants a web page. Using port numbers allows a server to provide more than one type of service. You may have a server in a company, for example, that offers a web page for company policies while also providing services like print server and file server simultaneously. Each of these different services are requested from clients on this server using different port numbers. The more popular, well-known services and applications have clearly defined port numbers. So let's get down to the nitty-gritty. A port number is a 16-bit value between 0 and 65,535. Within that range that we're going to first look at are the well-known port numbers, which run from 0 through 1,023. These are reserved for specific TCP IP applications, and I'll make a side note here that you never see port 0 actually used in that range. It falls within this range of well-known reserved port numbers, but it is never used by TCP or UDP. Now. Understand that there are destination and source port numbers used in networking. The client will always use a destination port number to send out a request. In order for a server to communicate back to the client, the server uses a different port number known as the source port number. The source port number is provided by the client itself. Again, going back to our web page request by the browser earlier, the client will send out a request on a destination port 80, but it will also notify the server of its own source port that the server can respond back with. Something like, hey server, I'm requesting this web page on port 80. You can reach me back or respond to me using port 51002. In this example, port 51002 is the source port number. It is also known as an ephemeral port because it is a port number that is made up by the client for use with the request. Typically, you'll need to know more well-known port numbers when you go to take certification tests like Network Plus or CCNA, CCNP, CCIE, etc. These well-known application port numbers are things like FTP for File Transfer Protocol that uses ports 20 and 21 and seldom port 20 anymore, primarily port 21. Telnet, which uses port 23. SSH, or Secure Shell, which uses port 22. DNS, Domain Name System, that uses port 53. DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, that uses UDP ports 67 and 68. TFTP, Trivial File Transfer Protocol, that uses 
UDP port 69, HTTP, which we talked about earlier that used port 80, that's hypertext transfer protocol, HTTPS, which is HTTP that uses secure certificates, and it uses port 443, as well as all of these that you would do well to not only memorize, but that you'll see quite often in networking. Those are the well-known port numbers. Then you have what are known as registered and dynamic port numbers in the rest of that range. Registered ports are ports 1024 through 49,151. Some of the less common TCP IP applications can register their ports with the IANA, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. Unlike well-known port numbers, like we just talked about, these port numbers can be used by anyone for their servers or for ephemeral port numbers on clients. Now, You'll find that a lot of operating systems still steer away from using these port numbers or this range of port numbers in this range, especially for ephemeral port numbers or on clients. And they tend to opt for using what are known as dynamic port numbers. Dynamic port numbers are port numbers in the range of 49,152 through 65,535. So that brings us to this question. What is a socket? So each computer on each side of a communication session, and that should give you some quick spoiler alert to what a session is, needs a way to keep track of the status of that communication session. In TCP IP, each combination of the IP address and the port number stored in RAM memory on one end of that communication is called a socket or endpoint. So the client stores the IP address and port number of the server for that session, which is known as the socket number. The server stores the IP address and source port number of the client for that same session number, also called its socket number. Both of those together are known as a socket pair or end points. And then last but not least, we get into what an actual session is. And as alluded to just a second ago, a session is what the session layer of the OSI model handles. It is the actual communication session initiated and continued between those two computers or devices, typically between the client computer that sent the initial request and the server that responds to the request. Simply put, ports and sockets and sessions are how two computers or devices across a network keep track of the communication between them across that network. Connection information stored on a single computer is called a socket or end point, and it contains the IP address and port number for the other computer or device that it is communicating with. Connection information stored on two computers about the same communication between those two computers is called socket pair or end points, and the entire communication between those two devices is called a session or a communication.